Yes, people, welcome back to Brennan Pearson Fitness. Today's video is going to be all about tips for hard gainers, tips for people who struggle to gain weight, struggle to build muscle. I myself are one. This is going to happen all the time. Okay, as I was saying, I'm a hard gainer myself. I find it very hard to gain weight. I'm a little bit taller, I'm six foot five. I'm about 96 kilograms. I'm on about 4,300 calories at the minute, so that's a lot of calories for a lot of people. Some people might not be in this position, but we're gonna cover things, nutrition, and also training, because you might wanna look at your training and adapt it slightly different. Some people have better genetics, therefore, people who are who do struggle to gain muscle might just have to manipulate the training. Before we start, excuse the hat, I need a haircut, that's why I've got this on. But we're also gonna be training pull today, so we're gonna do a pull session at Ultraflex, which you've probably seen in the title of the video. But we're gonna run through nutrition for hard gainers to start with. As you can see, we have my, you're gonna be a right pain in the arse today, aren't you? Come on, sit down. We're gonna run through nutrition. So, pre-workout meal, gonna have this about 90 minutes to two hours before we train. We're gonna be training Ultraflex, like I said before. So when it comes to your nutrition, when it comes to the food that you're eating, if you struggle to gain weight, you're gonna want things that are quite high in calories, but very low volume. So examples, things like juices. Juices are very in handy. As you can see, I don't have a lot here. I normally have 250 mils of cranberry juice. However, there's very limited left, so I'm gonna to have to make do. Oi, gonna to have to make do with, with just having that. So juices, very handy. High in carbohydrates, obviously you're drinking it, so you're just drinking your calories. Uh, orange juice could be fine. Any sort of juice would be fine. Cranberry juice, pineapple juice, orange juice, whatever it is, easy way to get some carbohydrates in your system. So other examples of things that are a little bit higher in carbohydrates, easy to get down here, are gonna be things like squares bars, saurine, and um, cocoa pops, things that are really, really light in the stomach. You'll see my post-workout meal later on. Um, throwing things like additional things like beetroot, which I've thrown in my, my intro workout, sorry, my pre-workout meal here. Additional carbs, not really too filling. Um, but yeah, anything that is going to be low in terms of volume of the food and high in terms of calories. Fats are a great source as well. So get plenty of nut butters, um, nuts, seeds, olive oil, adding olive oil and things. So adding additional fats to your meals will help you increase your calories overall. But yeah, make sure you're choosing foods that digest with you well as well. If you are trying to plow down loads of chicken and rice, whatever reason, the rice doesn't digest well with you, try switching the rice over to potato or something else. Especially when you start to get the higher calories, there's gonna be a little bit more stress in your digestive system. So once you're pushing four, four and a half, five thousand calories, you're gonna want foods that are gonna sit with you really well. That's when the things like the Cocoa Pops, uh, Rice Krispies, if rice sits well, yeah, things like that that are really light in your stomach, that are gonna digest easy, they come in really handy to bump them calories up. Um, so yeah, juices as well. Higher your calories are, easy way to get in. So pre-workout meal, Typical thing, probably if you've seen the last video that I've done when I've done a push day, we have a full pack of Uncle Ben's rice. I went for this, the golden vegetable one. Spinach, cucumber, beetroot, one and a half cans of tuna, a little bit of low fat meal, got my cranberry juice. Uh, I normally have some dark chocolate, but we have some homemade dark chocolate flapjacks with like some seeds and stuff in. So a little bit more calories in there, a few more cards, oats, all that stuff. Get this down, it's training 90 minutes to two hours. And like I said, I'll catch you for the next little tip. So next little tip for all you hard You just want to interrupt all of my videos, don't you? So next tip for all you hard gainers is going to be adding in an intra-workout drink, which pretty much means just a, a drink that you can have during your workout. Now, some of these things are going to be optional things, but there's going to be one or two things which I think, if you are struggling to gain weight, struggling to build muscle, it might be something that you might want to um, think about investing in, um, which might help you in terms of your training. So first one, electrolytes or salt, I just use pink Himalayan sea salt. Again, optional, just gonna help a little bit with um, with your pump, with hydration during your workout. Something that I've added in, one gram within my intra workout. Five grams of creatine monohydrate. I use the Crea Pure one by, by my protein, just is a little bit better quality. Not gonna make a massive difference, but five grams. I think anybody who resistance trains should probably be having creatine monohydrate. They say that some people, it doesn't affect um, as much as others, so they say they're a non-responder, but. For most people, five grams of creatine should be part of your intro workout. Next one, we have EAAs. Now this is gonna be an optional one. I think if you do have enough protein within your diet and if you are getting four or five meals equally spaced apart, these aren't essential. They might just help with that one or 2% in terms of reducing muscle protein breakdown during your training. Uh, so I had them in, I had 15 grams in and my coach just sent me them as well. But this is gonna be the one, Cilic Dextrin. It's a, it's a vegan thing, but it's not actually vegan. It's just, it's just a carb powder. I have this during my workout for two reasons. One, 
because it's just, you're drinking carbs, you're drinking carbohydrates. I have 80 grams of this during my workout, which is about 200, 300 calories. So it's just calories that you can get in without even thinking about it. And also there's benefits in terms of, again, reducing muscle protein breakdown, a combination of acidic dextrin or any sort of carbs with some amino acids during your workout has been shown to reduce muscle protein breakdown, pretty much the breakdown of your muscles during training. So I've added this in, there's a few benefits to it. So if you are struggling to gain weight, struggling to get your calories in, maybe you don't have a big appetite, maybe stick an intra workout in. If you train fasted as well, I would probably definitely stick an intra workout in, stick some carbs in, stick some amino acids in, just so you're getting a little bit of a little bit of fuel for your, for your training. But gonna get this made, gonna take the dog for a walk, a digestion, if you feel like you are having a lot of calories and you're struggling with digestion, get yourself out for a five minute walk afterwards. And also I've been in the gym all morning and the sunshine, so having any sunlight, so get some sunlight in as well. Uh, and then we're gonna head off to the gym. So I'll see you there. So, uh, uh, I'm here. Sit. Paw. Two paw. Now wait. 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 Are you taking the box? Go on then. Good girl. feels where sun's out good music on in the background and you're about to go and hit up a decent session summer's coming but 100 i definitely have that seasonal depression disorder whatever it is where you're like really down in the winter and then when the sun comes out you immediately got a massive boost of energy anybody with me let me know in the comments below but anyway on our way to the gym about 20 minutes away now started sipping on our hr labs dfib just got this one very decent, very decent, good focus. Uh, 200 milligrams of caffeine in half a serving. So we just go for half a serving because I'm trying to keep my caffeine uh, caffeine relatively low. That's another thing as well. If you're struggling to gain weight, watch your caffeine consumption because caffeine is an appetite suppressant. So if you are someone who hammers coffee, hammers your, your monsters, hammers your pre-workout, you might not have as much of an appetite. So maybe just try dropping that down a little bit. Which I might as well, might as well just have a little bit of a chat about a few things in terms of things that you can do if you do struggle to gain weight the first thing that i would say to someone if they were saying they were struggling to gain weight or struggling to build muscle is are you eating enough protein are you eating at least 2 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of your body weight and if you are is the food that you're having of good quality are you having good quality meat are you having processed meat are you having whey protein powder or are you having maybe a very cheap low quality maybe plant-based protein powder, nothing wrong with plant-based protein powders, but they're not as high in amino acids. So you need to have a look at the quality of protein. I know you're getting a lot of your protein from sources like bread, from carbs, because once you start to increase your calories, once you start to increase your carbohydrate intake, your protein intake will be, will be going up just purely through them carbs. So if you have, I don't know, 100 grams of rice might have eight or nine grams of protein and that quality of protein is not gonna be as good as say chicken breast or steak or a scoop away protein. So what I would advise people if you are on higher calories and are, and are over maybe four, 500 grams of carbs, I would probably bump your protein up, maybe an extra 10, 15, 20 grams, just to assure that you're getting enough amino acids in. Um, just yeah. It's best to be safe and always go a little bit higher on protein. So if you aren't higher calories and you're already hitting four, 500 grams of carbs, more carbs isn't gonna help too much. If you're hitting the, the high 500s, then yeah, probably just up that protein and maybe look to up your fats as well, which will help a little bit with the hormones as well. A few other key things to, to look into as well is definitely the most important one, which a lot of people neglect, which is your sleep. Sleep is the best testosterone booster the best way to increase your, your testosterone 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 is the best way to increase your muscle mass if you have a higher testosterone then you are going to increase more muscle mass you're going to be stronger you're going to lift more weights in the gym and that all in all again is going to help you gain weight so prioritize your sleep eight hours of sleep consistently cutting off caffeine eight to ten hours before you go to bed last meal two hours before you go to bed try blue light blockers within the last few hours before you go to bed, maybe nasal strips, maybe cover your mouth with mouth tape when you sleep, all these little tips which I've covered in videos and podcasts before. Um, I'll see if I can tag the podcast down below that I've covered all the sleep, but yeah, prioritize your sleep. It's the biggest thing that a lot of people neglect. If you're going to bed at 2 a.m., waking up at 6 a.m. for work or whatever it is, you're not gonna be getting a good quality sleep and your training's gonna suck, which is gonna obviously carry over into you not building muscle. 
but I'll ramble a little bit more about training and what you can do in terms of training, especially if you're someone who is a little bit taller, because a lot of hard gainers tend to be taller people or people who are quote unquote ectomorphs. So I'll run through that when I'm doing a training voiceover, looking at my pull day setup, and maybe a few things you need to consider. But let's get to the gym, get the music back on, pre-workout in the system, pull day at Ultraflex, coming in. Right, so pull day at Ultraflex is a little bit different to my usual plan because I'm trying out a few different bits of bobs. Obviously, when you go into a, the new gym, you want to try new equipment. First one, I wanted to use the prime seated row, but it was already taken. So I went for another chest supported row alternative. T-bar row, I think this is an Atlantis one. Good thing about this exercise is that the resistance drops off as you get a little bit higher up. So as you get into that weaker position, which is where your elbows are driving all the way back when you're trying to squeeze back as much as you can, that's the weakest position for your back. The weight eases off. So you can get a little bit more weight in the stretch position, and obviously a little bit lighter in that in that shortened range. So we did one heavy set of six to 10, then we did one back off set of 10 to 12. And I think, did I do a drop set on this one? I can't remember. No, I think I just did a just two straight sets on this one, really pushing to failure. Again, a question that you need to ask yourself if you are struggling to gain weight, gain muscle, I covered it in a little, very short tiktok -y real thing um, on, on social media, is are you trading hard enough? If, if, you, if you aren't training within at least two reps away from true failure, then you are definitely not trading hard enough at all. You need to be pushing the intensity. And when I'm talking failure, I'm talking all out failure. And if you don't know what failure is, you need to learn, you need to train to failure to see what that is. When people jump straight into using RPE scales or RIR reps and reserve scales, they, they've never pushed that through intensity. So how can you be the judge if you're actually training hard enough? Make sure to start off with a lot, of, a lot of new clients, obviously you learn the movements. If it's someone who's maybe a beginner, you're just getting into training, you're probably not gonna go all the way to failure. But if you're someone who's had a bit of experience, I would probably start them off train to failure, make sure the technique's staying on point. Obviously, we're not sacrificing technique, maybe saving one or two reps on exercise like back squats, RDLs, things that are a little bit more um, risky in a sense. But on these exercises where you're supported in position, there's nothing much that can really go wrong. You're gonna push it all the way to failure. Exercise number two, again, new equipment. I think it's a gym shop. Uh, I saw that pull down. We did two sets on this one. And I realized I was programmed um, two sets of 10 to 12 of a rest pause. But I ended up doing one top set of 10, uh, 6 to 10 and one back off set of, I think, between 10 and 12. And I did a drop set by accident. But, you know, new equipment. Great. Again, this machine is set up. So as you get into that stress position, the weight increases just so you can see how the machine is set up. If you want to look more into biomechanics, exercise mechanics, and how machines are set up, again, check out the muscle mentors. They're really good on that sort of stuff. But on this one, as you pull down, the weight drops off. So when you're in that weak position, the weight drops off a little bit so you can get that full range, even when the weight's quite heavy. And then as you get into that length and range, that stretch position, when that arm's straightening up and that lat, that lat is starting to stretch, the weight increases where you're a little bit stronger. So very, very good exercise. Key points on this one is you wanna make sure you're keeping that elbow tucked in. When you're doing exercises which are lat focused, you wanna keep that elbow tucked in. You might be able to see it from a later video once we skip to a different angle. Really think about keeping that elbow tucked in. And I'm ever so slightly crunching to the side just so I can get a little bit more contraction. Too many people over crunch to the side, which is not what you want. You just want a slight little lean to the side on this one. Again, just feel that lat cramping up. If you're not connecting with exercise, if you're not feeling the muscles you're working, this is something that you need to consider again if you're not, not building muscle. You might need to either one, drop the weight, drop the weight, excuse me. Two, maybe play around with different positions of exercise setups. Uh, maybe for example, for leg presses, maybe moving your feet different stances, see what feels better for you. And then the last one, you might need to change exercises. If you're not connecting with a movement, if it's not feeling great with you, then it might have to change it over. There isn't obviously one exercise which is perfect for everybody. Things like this, the reason I'm doing a single arm version is just so I can line it up perfectly with my shoulder and drive straight down and I connect with it really well. The position I've set it up was works really well. For some people, they might not like this machine. They might prefer doing it on a cable or they might prefer it on the hammer strength one. Um, so there's different variations. As you can see, this angle here, I'm really keeping that elbow tucked in. Just got a slight little lean to the side. Um, so yeah, back to the point. If you're not connecting with a movement, give it a few weeks. You might not connect with certain ones to start off with. Give it a few weeks um, and then you might need to change it out. And also if you're getting any pain or any irritation with exercises, for example, for me with certain exercises like pec decks, I get a little bit of elbow irritation. So I've been replacing them with a cuff variation, putting the cuff on my upper arm. So if you are a taller lad like myself, you might need to manipulate um, 
the exercises that you're doing and also how you're setting them up. So starting off with your isolation movements like this. So if you were maybe struggling with some elbow pain or shoulder pain, doing your back movements, try a, a, an isolation like this lat pullover. I tried the Dorian Yates one, the Nautilus one, but the strength curve on this one just didn't line up with me. It was really weird. So it's really light at the top and then really heavy at the bottom. So I couldn't really get used to it. So I left it and switched over to the prime one where you, again, you can manipulate the weight on this one. Um, so starting off with your isolation movements, just warms the joint up a little bit more. You can see I'm playing around with setup here. And um, when it's a new, new machine, I'm not quite sure how to set it up. So starting with your isolation movements, for example, my leg days, I always start with my isolations. I do my hamstring curls to warm my knee joint up. I do my leg extensions to get my quad nice and short. And again, warm the knee joint up because there's a lot less risk with them exercises compared to me jumping straight into back squats or a half squat straight away. So starting with your isolation movements, it also builds up that mind-muscle connection. I think if you are someone who's a little bit taller, we struggle a little bit more with that mind-muscle connection. So playing around with movements, really dropping the load, maybe having to go higher reps to start with, just so you can feel the muscle working. Then once you get comfortable with movements, progressing. Quick little point on this one. You see a lot of people holding onto the handles on this movement. You don't want that because that's almost giving your butt, putting your body in position that might not be naturally comfortable for you. You want to be driving with the elbows. You want to be adducting that arm down. You don't want to be gripping onto anything. You can almost slightly cheat. So my coach, James Sutton, has, has given me a few pointers on that one. Um, I've been using the hammer strength one in my gym, so this is a little different setup. Um, but you want to keep your hands loose and think about driving those elbows back and down on this one really isolating those lats and staying locked in, keeping that core engaged. A lot of people lose their core position on when they're trying to do lat, pull, lat movements like lat pull down, they end up flexing backwards too much and losing that core engagement, so keep that one in. And we did two sets of 10 to 12, I think, on that one as well. Onto an upper back movement, looking at my form on this one, I probably need a little bit more of a lean back, which is why exercise videos, recording your exercises is so important, especially for all my online clients. If you are watching this, make sure you record your exercises. If you do want to hop on board at online coaching, I will make sure you get your exercise videos in so we can get that form on point. But this is going to be an upper back focus, lat pull down, which is why I'm letting my elbows flare a little bit more and I'm trying to lean back. The reason is, if we, if we start to keep our elbows more tucked in, we're gonna be hitting our lats. If we let the elbows flare a little bit more, that's gonna bring that upper back in a little bit more. The more we lean back, obviously, the more that mid back's gonna kick in rather than the lats. And that's another point as well. You don't wanna be completely sitting upright if you're doing a lat movement. You want a slight little lean back just the way that the lats are set up. It doesn't wanna be reaching over completely overhead, just slightly in front. You can see from this angle, I probably do need a little bit more of a lean backwards. Um, which is again another point. I feel like I'm rounding nodes on this on this clip. But if you see people in the gym doing certain exercise setups, don't judge them straight away. Because sometimes I remember back in the day, if I seen someone really leaning back on a lap pull down, I would instantly judge them and think, why are they doing that? However, they might be doing it for a reason. They might be setting it up for their upper back. Yes, if they're swinging back and forward, then that's just a different story. But if you're setting it up in position, staying locked in, your form's good, then they might be doing it for a certain way. So don't, don't be judging people in the gym. Yeah, exercise setup, make sure you are thinking about the muscles that you're working. And um, again, on this one, let those elbows flare, drive it back as far as we can, we're staying locked in. We did two sets of 10 to 12, and we did do a drop set on this one, I'm pretty sure. And you can see the intensity again, going back to the main point, are you training hard enough? You can see how slow my last few concentric starts on the way back down. See how slow they are. I'm trying to push as close to failure as we can. Once either that form completely breaks, or we can't get that full pretty much all the way down. We maybe finish with one or two partials and then we drop the weight or we finish the set depending on what you're doing. I'll let me finish a few reps out. I'm probably leaning back a little bit more on these ones um, and I'm letting my core kind of relax a little bit more on this. So I'm getting a little bit more thoracic extension. Whereas when I'm doing my lat pull down, I'm trying to engage my core and stay locked in. Not so much focusing about squeezing the shoulders back on my lat pull down movements on my lat focus movements, I should say. Whereas on this one, I'm letting them flare, squeezing them shoulders back uh, and using the straps. There's no harm in using straps when you're doing exercises and where you're trying to hit specific muscles like your back um, or if you're doing RDLs and you're trying to focus on your glutes and hamstrings. I think if you are a beginner, maybe to start off with, do one or two years without using straps just to build some sort of grip strength up unless it's massively affecting your session and you're not getting any connection with your back movements. 
On to biceps, nearly finished the workout now. Again, trying out new machines. I'm normally programmed the single arm preacher curl. This is a similar sort of thing, just a really high position, allowing a little bit of shoulder flexion so we can get that bicep as short as possible, curling in, pauses as, as much as we can. You wanna be working each muscle in different ranges so you can see in this angle, focusing on the, sh the, the shortened range of the bicep. The next exercise is gonna be length and range. We did one heavy set on this one six to 10 and then one back off set of 10 to 12 on each side. Always starting with my weaker side, so I always start on my left. I do as many reps as I can on the left, all the way to failure. Again, you can see how slow these last three reps are. And then I just match it on the other side. Even if I get six reps on my left side and my right side can only do eight, I'll just do, I'll just do six on that side just to make sure we don't have any imbalances. So make sure you're putting some unilateral, some single arm, single leg movement within your training. And then last but not least, we have bicep curls, slight little incline, not too much of an incline on this one, just because everyone's shoulder mobility is slightly different, mine isn't that good, so I don't have too much of an angle. Working a bit more of the length and range. These grips as well on these dumbbells were thicker ones, I didn't realize till after, but they're like um, the fat, fat grip sort of grips on this one. Not gonna make a massive difference, but key points on this, keep the elbows locked in, control that tempo, you will be able to finish that rep, even though it gets as hard as it, 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 hard as it feels, at the midpoint, once you get past that midpoint, really focusing on squeezing, keeping a supinated grip. Um, biceps are one of the worst muscle groups to train. In my opinion, biceps, hamstrings, shoulders are the most painful muscle groups to train. Let me know down below what your opinion is the most, your least favorite or most painful muscles to train. Biceps are very, very painful. Uh, and I know you forgot, a little bit to finish. We have the 45 degree lower back or lumbar extensions or flexion extensions, I don't, know, I don't know what the specific name is for them, but pretty much we're isolating the lower back on this one. So normally with a 45 degree hip extension, we would have it down just below the hips as if like where you would for hip thrusts in a similar sort of sense. Whereas this one, I've set the machine up so it's kind of in the middle of my, of my back. So we wanna be thinking of doing the opposite of a crunch. So on the way down, we are crunching our abs as if we are doing a crunch to get as much stretch in that lower back as possible. And then we're thinking about using our lower back, our lower back muscles to squeeze as much back, as far back as we can. So our rectors are gonna really be burning on this one as much as possible. Something that might not look like it's a good exercise, but trust me, it's isolating the, the movement that the erectors, the lower back does, which is gonna be flexion and extension uh, of, the, of the spine. So really killing this one, doing three sets of 12 to 15. Um, rest period's not too crazy on this one. If you're not doing any lower back isolation movements, and you do get a bit of lower back issues when you're deadlifting, maybe squatting, I'll probably think about isolating and, and putting these movements in just to strengthen those areas um, and maybe take out your deadlifts for a while, strengthen that lower back up with isolation movements and then maybe add it in, obviously strengthen up your glutes and hamstrings and lats and everything as well. And then we did three sets of hanging knee raises. I normally do an ab mat crunch, but I didn't have my ab mat with me, so just a little bit of ab stuff on here. Again, look at the mind muscle connection, look at how slow I'm going. I'm thinking about tilting that pelvis upwards, crunching them abs. I'm not just thinking about lifting my legs up and down. Yes, your hip flexors are gonna be firing in this one, but we wanna isolate the abs as much as possible. Um, so we're doing the back extensions and then in between we did these as well. So do not neglect your little movements, your calves, your abs, your lower back stuff, your prehab. Make sure you're taking them off. Again, massively important. Then minor details, if you're struggling to build muscle, if you're skipping out on them smaller exercises and just doing all the big fancy ones that everyone likes to put on Instagram, you might not be getting them results that you want. So once we've done this, we just finished off with 20 minutes of nice steady state cardio after this. Um, in the off season, or if you're wanting to gain weight, do not neglect cardio. I do 20 minutes twice a week. Keep that heart rate going. Keep the health, uh, keep yourself as nice and healthy as possible. It'll also help with your recovery in between sets. Here's a little bit of a back shot. I'm not really a bodybuilder. Um, I would like to get into it a bit more, maybe compete down the line. So this is just me pretending to do some pausing. Back's one, kind of a strong point for me, I would say. And um, still got a lot of weight to put on, especially in that lower uh, erectors, uh, erector area, but we're working, we're working. So yeah, that is a lot of tips for you lads and, and ladies, if there's any watching. If you're a hard gain, if you struggle to gain weight, maybe if you're a little bit taller, maybe if you, you do really find it hard to put muscle on or gain weight in general, there's a lot of tips in there that hopefully will help you out. Um, just to recap through them all, I've got a little list here. Carbohydrates, massively important. Make sure you're getting plenty in. That's gonna be the main thing that you're gonna be aiming to increase calories 
uh, when you're trying to gain weight. Your protein and your fats will most likely stay roughly around the same amount. Uh, carbohydrates, try and push them up as high as we can because that's going to fuel recovery, it's going to fuel performance, it's going to help us build a little bit more muscle. You can add things in like intra workouts, junior work in, uh, workouts to obviously get a few more carbs in. Uh, things like juices, going to be really easy to get carbs in your system. I know I listened to a podcast with Josh Bridgman in the Off the Cuff podcast. He was talking to he's like has like a liter of orange juice, or apple juice a day, just to get the calories in. Obviously, he's on the extreme end of the spectrum. Then there's also things like malt loaf, cereal, bagels, squares bars, things that digest really, really easily and that are very calorie dense for what they are. And they're going to be an easy way to get your calories up. You can also increase your fats if you are really struggling. Nice one, camera diet on me. But yeah, added in, added in your fats, like I said, olive oil, avocado, peanut butters, any sort of nut butters will be fine. 85% dark chocolate, um, getting plenty of oily fish in. All them things will help increase your fats uh, and increase your calories. Obviously, we know that fat has more calories per gram than carbohydrates and protein has nine calories, whereas protein and carbs only have four then we also got to look at our quality of our food and our protein intake. Are we hitting that minimum of 2 to 2.2 grams per kilogram? By the way, if you're, if you're 80 kilograms, you need to be hitting that minimum of 160. And like I mentioned earlier, if you are on higher calories, if you're having a lot of carbohydrates, you might be getting too much protein from your sources of carbs. Uh, obviously, things like bread have a lot of protein in, pasta does, oats do and potato has a little bit in, your carbohydrates will have some protein in. So you might just have to think about increasing your protein sources, your meats, uh, your dairy sources like your Greek yogurts, um, whey protein, plant-based protein, whatever it is that you're having to get your protein in. Have a think about maybe slightly increasing them up just to make sure that we're getting the good quality protein in. And make sure that again, it is good quality. Try and choose organic sources and the best quality that you can possibly get. Then you're gonna look obviously about digestion. Is the food that you are having digesting well with you? If you're getting a lot of bloating, if you're getting a lot of dodgy, dodgy stool, which we don't wanna talk about, but if you're getting a lot of diarrhea, all that sort of stuff, you may, might need to have a look at changing the foods you have. Start with something really simple. It might be certain vegetables that, you, that aren't digesting well with you. There's a lot of people who can't digest certain vegetables very well. Might be a certain carb source, might be a certain protein source, you might be having too much dairy. Uh, you might have some sort of food tolerance that you don't realize. So have a look at the food that you're, digest that you're you are eating. How well is it digesting? And maybe make a little bit of a note of it as well on each day and what, what you've had that's maybe caused you to have bad, di bad digestion. And then obviously go back and, and maybe change the food. Uh, and the last couple of things, sleep, massively important. One of the most underrated things um, to help with recovery and build the muscle. It's been shown to obviously improve your improve your energy output, so you're gonna be able to train better. It's been shown to boost testosterone. Uh, so make sure you get in, try and get a minimum of eight hours good quality sleep, cutting off caffeine about eight to 10 hours before you go to bed. Get some sunlight in. Uh, and then obviously to do a training, I forgot to mention before, make sure you are tracking your training. If you are not tracking your training, you will not be optimizing your gym performance. Make sure that you are sticking to exercises. So maybe I have two rotations of exercises. So I have a, a legs, push, pull, upper body, lower body. That's one week. The next week I'll do the same split. So legs, push, pull, rest day, upper body, lower body. Uh, or let, uh, sorry, a lower body, upper body, but I'll choose a different set of exercise, exercises and I'll rotate through them. Um, and I've been rotating through them for nearly like six months now. So the exercises have stayed consistent. Not every session is going to be the same, but I'm staying consistent with those sets of exercises because it takes you a while to learn the movements. It might take you six to eight weeks to get used to a movement. There's still some movements now that I'm still getting used to and it's been six months. Um, so just make sure you, you stick to them. It's like anything, you practice it, you've got to get good at it, it's going to take a while to master it, and then you can progress, logbook things, whether you do the old fashioned way and have a logbook or a pen and paper, or you do it on your phone, I use an app called Strong, I think it's called, or does Rep Count, or if you're one of my clients, you'll use True Coach. Make sure you are tracking your lifts, make sure you are writing in the weights you're lifting, trying to beat the reps, or trying to beat the maybe the technique, trying to improve technique, or trying to improve weight each week. Start by progressing little bits, 2.5 kilograms each week, one or two reps each week, and then over time you'll get stronger. Make sure you're tracking, you need to preach that. Uh, and then obviously down to pick an exercise that works well, well for you. If you're a total lad like me, you might have to do a few isolation stuff first, you might get a few joint issues. Um, I've had loads of knee issues myself, 
uh, knee surgeries, groin surgery, back issues, ankle surgery. So I need to manipulate my exercises. Some of the things you see me do, like the reverse banded stuff, top banded stuff, um, do my isolations and my leg day before my compound stuff, is all because of my injuries and the previous history that I've had. And I know it works well for me and I know the exercises that, that sit well with me and that I really connect with. Stick with them. If you enjoy doing something, you're probably going to want to do it and look forward to do it and progress a little bit better. Uh, in it as long as it's not doing you any harm so think about the exercise selection and yeah find a routine that you enjoy if you're going to be consistent if sorry if you're going to enjoy stuff you're going to be consistent and that consistency is going to get you results i've always said that um so yeah find a routine and split and a coach as well that you enjoy working with and if you want to work with me links down below to online coaching have to do a shameless plug um no one-to-one pt spaces at the minute but online coaching down below one or two spaces left but if you are struggling to build muscle, be patient, especially if you're in the natural games or the non-enhanced game. It's a long process. Do not expect to get results straight away. Do not expect to get results in 10 weeks, in, in two months. Expect to get results in years. I'll put a picture, or I might try and tag it down below, of Jeff Alberts, put a picture on, on Instagram last week. Or by the time this video comes out, it might be two weeks ago. Um, of him at 38 as a natural bodybuilder and 48 at a natural body. Now, a lot of you people who are watching this video are probably maybe 20, maybe 25. I don't know if there's any 30 year olds who watch this. Not going to be 38 and then move on to 40. You should, should, you should see the improvements that he's made, he has made in 10 years of being consistent, sticking to the routine. Play the long game if you are into bodybuilding, if you're into fitness at all. Play the long game with your fitness. Um, with your, your building, your muscle building journey. Do not stress about things straight away. Have a good period of trying to be in a calorie surplus. I'm going to commit to a good two or three years into it and then probably cut down. Everybody, when they're young, wants to get shredded, but you trust me, just stick to a process of staying in a surplus, training hard, sleeping well, recovering, being consistent, um, and down the line, you'll reap the rewards. So I'm in it for the long haul. I'm going to take this bodybuilding thing a little bit more seriously now. Um, myself, I've been, I've been enjoying it. I've been enjoying the bodybuilding scene. But um, yeah, that's enough of me rambling. I've made this video way too long, but hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you have, give the video a like, comment, anything at all. If there's any videos you want to see in the future, any people you want me to train with, any gyms you want me to go and see, let me know down below. Any topics you want me to cover, as always, um, like, comment, subscribe, all that usual stuff. Instagram, coaching links down below. Um, I hope everyone's having a splendid time. I uh, hope everyone's enjoying the training, enjoying life. Summer's coming. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Over and out.